Welcome to Dialysis Nurses Supporting Nurses, and today we're going to talk about what it takes to get the patient on the machine, specifically get the patient on the machine safely. From the outside looking in, it's just like, oh, you set up the machine and you assess the patient and then you hook them up and they're good for three hours and you'll like monitor and do all those other things. And it looks very simple, but there's a lot of like back office things. There's a lot of things going on in the background that keep dialysis safe, which is good news. That's great news that there are things that we have to do to make sure the patient is getting safe dialysis. But that also means there's a significant amount of time spent that is not productive time. And in the healthcare world, productive time means patient care time. How much time is the nurse spending with the patient? And then you can go like a little deeper and look at patient to nurse ratios, CNA to patient ratios, etc. To get, you know, the whole production, to get everything going smoothly, there is a lot of maintenance that has to be done every week or every month or every year. And I'm going to, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about what that looks like <laughs> because I'm learning a lot about it and I want to share it with all of you. <sighs> Number one, water safety. Water safety is important. And in order to keep the water safe, we need to keep the water room or the RO, the reverse osmosis unit, working well and producing safe water. Specifically, the water room goes through at least, depending on the water room and the regulations, there's like a monthly disinfect and I'm not as familiar with that. So I'm just gonna focus on what I, I do know, what I am familiar with, and that is the RO. And each RO, the water purifier has special like maintenance requirements that is required each month. Before we even get to the patient, before we even have orders for a patient, every every month or even like every week, we need to disinfect this water machine, we need to check the chloramine, and, and then it goes even deeper where at quarterly, you might need to change the membranes, monthly you might change the membranes or the filters, and that all takes time. Part of our water safety is water cultures. That is something that is required every month. Every month we need to show that our water is safe, that we're not growing bacteria, and there's not dead bacteria in our water that we're using for dialysis. So that's the water. And now we're going to the machine. We need to make sure that the machine is working properly. We also need to make sure that the machine is producing safe dialysate for our patients. So we do water cultures on those monthly. And then, what if they come back high? Then you need to repeat and then repeat until you get an acceptable level so you can bring that machine back into service. Because now, if one's coming back high, you're down a machine. And that it can be very stressful. In some units, depending on the size, you have to order your supplies. So then you're also ordering supplies and making sure that you have the supplies you need to provide dialysis, okay? So that's all taking up time that we're doing before we're even doing patient care. Next, we have a patient coming in. Yes, okay, we're ready for patient care. This is great news. I'm so excited. Before I can even hook up the patient, I need to have a consent for the patient because it's a procedure. So the nephrology nephrologist needs to round on the patient and we need to consent the patient and get orders. And I'm kind of, and it's all a very like fluid process. If I like, for example, if I know that I'm getting a patient and I know they have, I'm working acutes right now, if I'm getting a patient and I know they have a home clinic, I can be proactive and get their clinic order, see what their treatment looks like, where their labs have been, and very important, their hepatitis, their hepatitis labs, because hepatitis B, B blood, it is a blood borne virus that is spread blood to blood. So we need to make sure that each patient, and this is a state requirement, this is required, actually I think it's like in the United States, every, every dialysis patient has to either prove every month that they do not have hepatitis B or prove annually that they are immune to hepatitis B because they've been vaccinated or a few other ways that they would get immunity from it. So that is something you also need. So you need to order labs. So now I have the consent, I have the orders and Gosh, I feel like we're ready to go. That's great. And some of it, this all takes time. And depending on where you're at, there's different patient to nurse ratios with dialysis. In the acute setting, it's one to two. And the clinic setting, is a, that's a very vague number. I wish I could speak, speak more to that, but it's 
like one of those questions that nobody knows that you get a different answer every time. But in general, the hospital setting, it's a one to two ratio. So we have water safety, machine safety, ordering of supplies, and then getting ready for the patient, making sure that you know the patient well before you, before you hook them up You do it and you do a great assessment. And then you hook them up and then you monitor them and then there's other, other things that can go wrong like uh, a catheter that's not working or a fistula that's not working or uh, the patient just isn't tolerating dialysis well. There's a lot of monitoring that goes on during dialysis. Important things that are part of the assessment for dialysis patients are daily weights. We need to look for edema, shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting. One thing that I have to remember working in acutes is that my day can change on a dime. I, it, it, it's, very, it's very fluid and that's and that's like pun intended because dialysis, we remove fluid, but we have to be fluid in general when staffing because I could be done at five o'clock and I've got all my patients done for the day and then somebody comes in emergently or suddenly has shortness of breath and all of a sudden I need to do dialysis on them and I'm there another three hours. So then I have to stay late, but on the flip side, so I don't, I can't leave until the work is done, but if the work is done early, then I get to leave earlier. You know, it's just, very fluid. It changes just like that. And either you like that type of work or you don't. People that need a very like strict schedule, like this is what time I start and this what time this is what time I'm done. That's really not the acute setting. It at least that's not been my experience. I hope this kind of helps give you a good visual of dialysis that it's there's a lot of patient care, but there's also like back office things. There's things that are going on behind the scenes that are keeping dialysis safe and that's great news.